I'm an artist who lives and works in Johannesburg, in South Africa, and everything that I do starts as drawing, but the drawings transform into many different mediums and forms. So they start as drawings, but very often they develop into films, animated films, and sometimes those films are used with theatre production, so it becomes a kind of drawing in four dimensions, animation moving through time and in space on the stage. William Kentridge has become renowned for his very expressionistic drawings and what is remarkable about them is that they are as beautifully drawn as a, a, a Rembrandt but they also come to life, he animates them and more recently they've not only come to life on the walls of galleries but also they've come to incorporate music, dance, uh, whole environments. The charcoal animated films are obsessive. I mean, they demand a kind of an obsessive working with them. It's, and it is a kind of a transformation of the world. The world comes into the studio in the terms of an image or something I'm going to draw. And then it gets taken apart into time, into distance. Each one has to be drawn, erased, redrawn, erased to give the illusion of movement. The installation Refusal of Time is uh, five video projectors and five different megaphones projecting images of metronomes, of clocks, of melodramas, of signals going through the universe, of the gravitational wave pulsing its way along. In the centre of the installation there's a large wooden mechanical object like the engine of time and a very rich musical soundtrack that pumps through the whole room. So you're enveloped by the projections and the machines in the space. And we discovered at the end that, yes, it's about time, but really it's about trying to escape our fate that we know we cannot escape. What does the end mean? Which is both a question for physics, but a question for humanists through all the ages. I was blown away by this thumping, pulsating immersion in light and sound. Watching these films is an exhilarating experience. Art is vital, but it's one of the ways we construct who we are. In the books we read, in songs we hear, we find either affirmations of impulses we've had, or find new things, but there's a way one can describe a biography by all these cultural, ephemeral experiences that we've had that consolidate who we are. And there's a great strength that comes from those connections of what it is to not feel on your own, to feel other points of understanding and commonality. And I think that's where the heart of art making lies, certainly for the artist.